The member for Mount Waverley. Oh, thank you, Acting Speaker. And um, I'm very excited to speak on this bill today, the uh, Marine Safety Amendment Better Boating Fund Bill 2020. And I do appreciate the, the vast array of experience from my colleagues and, uh, and even the opposition on this, because fishing and boating is something that I think all Victorians have at some stage come into contact with their families. And it really is one of those family pastimes that uh, I think many have enjoyed. And I will come back to that because I do have some family stories that uh, if, if I do get time, I will uh, regale you with acting speaker. But I think the, the uh, I know you're waiting for that member for Burwood and I will, uh, I'll just make you wait a little bit more because it'll sweeten the deal that touch. So I think the first important thing to touch on with this bill is obviously the amount of people in, in Victoria, uh, over 400,000 Victorians hold a marine licence and there's so many, many more um, that interact with our fisheries, with our coastal towns, and these towns revolve around fishing, boating and the related activities. We heard from the member from Nepean earlier, and obviously in his area there is, is a definite one-to-one -one relationship with his constituents and every part of the coastline. There's not a lot of coast in Mount Waverley, I'll give you that, but I, I do have uh, I, I have heard from a number of constituents during the course of the pandemic, which obviously has had an effect on recreational activities like fishing and boating. I've had a number of constituents who have, who have come to me and just, you know, they're, they're waiting on being able to get back to the coast. One in particular who I recall uh, told me that, uh, you know, fishing is, is the thing that he loves and he's gone so far now that he's, he's now uh, catching carp in Scotchman's Creek, which I thought was pretty inventive because it's a fairly small little creek, but apparently there's carp in there. So you can actually fish in Mount Waverley. This is something I didn't know, but it just proves we've got it all in my patch. So I, um, I think the important part of this bill that I really like to reflect on is the fact that we are delivering yet another commitment that we've said we're going to do. And if you go back a couple of years when I was very lucky enough to um, be given this seat and part of the deal was what we say is what we'll do. And again, we're showing that that is true and that you can be with us and that is how you can make those sort of promises, that you can say that and then once you do it, people will believe it the next time you say it. And I think the re-election of the Andrews government in 2018 proved that that is the case. And if you compare that to other governments, uh, maybe the, the federal government, where we hear a lot of announcements. We don't necessarily see that coming to fruition. Now, maybe these things take longer than, than some of us are prepared to wait. But I think it's very important to, yes, make the announcements about what you're going to do, but to actually follow up. And this bill, this bill follows up. And uh, I can recall even last year when I had a number of constituents call me about the boat ramp fees and the and saying, when's this happening, when's this happening, when's this happening? I was very, very happy to call them and tell them that it had actually happened. And, uh, it, you know, again, it just reinforces that ability to tell people, yes, this is what we're going to do, and now we've done it. Which is a lot better than standing up and saying, well, what we're going to announce today is that we're planning to announce the things that we're about to do once we've finished the planning to announce the things that we're planning to do, and that's what we're announcing today. I mean, that's a very nice little word salad but it doesn't actually achieve anything. So I, I'm mindful when we're talking about fishing and boating of one of my favourite films that I have men mentioned a couple of times in this house before, The Castle. And, uh, you know, you've got that scene in The Castle where they're going to Bonnie Doon. And they're all in the car and they're chanting, we're going to Bonnie Doon. And the reason they're going there as a family is because that's their special place. And I think we all remember the little scene with this, the, you know, ah, the serenity. And it really brings down when they go out in the fishing boat that that is family time. And as I said before, I, f fishing is something that in my younger years, we would go out with my grandfather, good old Lindsay Fregan, and uh, he, he would take us fishing. And for many years, my parents would join up with some uh, family friends of ours and we'd go down to Meetung 
which uh, might even be in the Bass electorate, I'm not sure, or is it just one over? Gippsland South. Gippsland South. Right, well, I'll shout out to the member there. Good old me time, we'd be there every year and we'd go fishing and uh, I, uh, I have some very, very fond memories. I'm not much of a fisherman myself these days. Um, happy to reacquaint myself and I think given that we're poking towards a Christmas where we're going to be telling everyone, please go and visit regional Victoria. Please put some money into the tourism industry because they, like everyone else, have been doing it tough. And we have so many fantastic places to go in regional Victoria that this is exactly what we saw. I'll be doing it. I'm not sure where I'm going to go, but I'm sure we'll find somewhere great. And uh, maybe I'll take the kids out fishing, considering that we will actually have better boating. Um, it's, it's a perfect thing to do. So I remember a little story, and uh, there was a friend of the family, that their son named Stuart, uh, and I won't give his surname because uh, he's, uh, he's a senior lawyer somewhere now and we won't embarrass the poor guy. But uh, I remember being in the boat and we were fishing on one side of the, of the tinny and we're catching this issue. And you'd catch little ones. And this is back, oh, this would be uh, late 70s acting speaker. So we're going back a little while. And so you catch little ones. You think, right, well, we'll use those for bait. So now, Stuart was about, oh, six, I reckon, at the time, six or seven. I was probably a bit older. Anyway, so me and my father and, uh, and uh, Uncle Len, we were, we were on one side of the boat. We're fishing off the side of the boat. We catch the little ones and we put them in the, the bucket. We're going to use them for bait later. And uh, we turned around after about half an hour and looked and there's nothing in the bucket. Stuart was sitting there putting them back. So every those little ones were going, I oh, should have enough bait now, there's nothing there, because Stuart had been giving them back. So fishing is part of the circular economy in that story, I guess, and something that the, um, the Andrews government is also working on. And uh, I, you know, shout out to the Minister for Environment and Climate Change, because the, uh, the things that are coming towards us in the next year on the circular economy are very, very special. So the purpose... Uh, what we committed to, again, is important, and we committed to allocate all the proceeds of collected boat licence and registration fees to improving facilities and safety for the boating community, and to establish the Better Boating Fund to facilitate urgent boat ramp upgrades and continual maintenance of Victoria's boating infrastructure. And I'm sure that makes all of our regional colleagues happy, at least you think so, although there, is, there does seem to be a quibble on the reasoned amendment about exactly how the money is apparently going to be done. Now, I, look, I think at the end of the day, the Treasury is going to put the dollars they required into the fund. I don't think it necessarily matters if it's the same $50 note that comes in that goes out. It's the same amount of money. And frankly, most money these days comes in digitally. So how would you know it's the different money anyway? It's just numbers. So I don't know if I'm... Well... <laughs> Well, I don't think you'd want to wrap your fish in dollars because that would be a waste of good money. But if I can pick up, uh, you just made me think of fish and dollars, and that brought me to the member for Morty Alex's contribution, where he challenged us, as you well pointed out, Acting Speaker, that he had the best fish and chips in Melbourne. Well, I'm not going to stand for that either, right? I think we should, we should have a fish and chip off because there's plenty of places around Mount Waverley that do very fine fish and chips. Uh, and uh, I will challenge the member for Morty Alec at any time, and maybe we'll do a blind tasting. We could do, I reckon we could get a few contributors. I think if we had this out, there'd be some providers that'd be happy to come and fight it out. Uh, member for Mornington, you might have some fish and chip shops down your way that'd be happy to jump in on that. Windery. Windery, again, right? We all love our fish and chip shops. And growing up down in the Ferntree Gully, and I know Minister, the member for Ferntree Gully is not here, but growing up down in the gully, we had a fish and chip shop three doors down from my father's shop every Friday night. And I'm old enough that I can remember you could actually go and get the little crunchy bits from the top and you could go and pay five cents for that. <laughs> and I know that's probably not health, sort of uh, healthy these days or, or from an OHS point of view probably doesn't pass muster, but uh, it was good then. So look, Acting Speaker, this is a fantastic achievement for this government, another one in the myriad of achievements that we have done because we've said we'll do something and then we do it. I commend this bill to the House and I just know that Victorian people 
will thoroughly appreciate it.